this is Sarah, and I think I want to talk about Salmon Run, the game mode from Splatoon, but I also kind of want to talk about God. What? God. And by God, I think I mean like, um, like nature, like the natural world, the universe, physics, science, not like, not like what you probably are thinking. That's a really loaded word, but we'll, we'll use it because it's fun and it sounds silly in the context of Splatoon. I have been playing the game Splatoon since the original came out back like six or so years ago now, maybe even going on seven. It is definitely my flavor of stimulation. It involves chaos and flux, vandalism, making messes, uh, Japanese pop culture, um, sea creatures, everything that I already really, really love and appreciate rolled into a package that I can consume on a daily basis in small doses and feel good. There's this game mode in Splatoon called Salmon Run, which is a player versus environment mode. That is to say, you aren't playing against other people, um, you're playing with other people against the computer. And it is a firefight-like game mode. The rules are pretty simple. You have to put the golden eggs inside of the basket while hundreds of salmon are trying to kill you in order to meet your quota before time runs out. While doing so, you need to make sure that your entire team also stays alive. If everyone dies, it's considered a wipe and the round is over. There are three waves and you have to survive them all. There are two different types of enemies that you will encounter during these waves. There are boss type enemies, which you have to defeat in a very specific way. And then there are normal enemies which can kill you, but they're also pretty easy to defeat on their own. There's just lots and lots of them coming at you sometimes and it gets pretty tricky. So I play this game to rank as high as I possibly can because the game mode actually increases in difficulty the higher your rank. Once you get up there, things kind of fly off the rails and become beyond challenging. So much that something kind of special and unique happens in my brain. And this thing that happens is something akin to experiencing, like, God, really. But I need to explain what I mean, because that's a really weird thing to throw out on the table. Like, no, out of nowhere. Um, the harder the game mode gets, the more chaotic and complex and overwhelming it becomes. And you and your three other teammates are kind of working in tandem to stay on top of things as much as you possibly can to not get swamped or swallowed whole by the sheer amount of variables that are being thrust at you at every given moment. When I play this game mode, I click into a trance, like a meditative state where some part of my brain starts functioning that mutes out all other thought processes, and I'm able to expressly focus on the variables in this game mode. As chaotic as it gets, I almost feel like I'm completely aware of everything that's going on everywhere all at once, and I can almost pinpoint the exact moment in time when everything starts to go south if we indeed fail. You can usually remember exactly that decision that you made that affected the whole butterfly cascade phenomenon in such a way that led to failure. You feel like you're one with everything. You feel like you are a part of the chaos. And if one little small fiber of the whole moves, you can sense how everything else will move in relation to that piece. And it's not something that you really think about, it's just something that you experience while you're playing it. 
or at least I experience while I'm playing it. It feels like I'm part of one of those schools of fish where there's thousands and thousands of them, but if one moves, the entire body of fish seems to just maneuver in tandem as if the collective had its own mind. You feel so innately connected to the chaos that's taking place that you can't really tell where the boundary is between cause and effect, past and present or future. It all just kind of seems like a solid. That's kind of how I tend to see the universe as it is. Everything just is... It just is. <laughs> it's already happened. Kind of like how if you drop a splash of cream into coffee, if you have enough data, you can map exactly how the cream is going to slowly swirl throughout the coffee and dissipate. At surface level, we don't have all of the data, so it's something that we just observe. But you could technically plan or model the entire thing if you had every bit of data available to you about the environment. I think that the universe is spiraling outward in much the same way, and if we had all of the data possibly available, we could also predict everything that will ever happen in the entire universe ever ever. Definitely goes against free will, like we perceive ourselves as having free will, um, which is good enough for us, <laughs> but on the whole I think that everything has already happened. It's happening because it has to happen this way. A Salmon Run match is a contained, finite instance of the same thought experiment. And again, when I play the game, it feels kind of like I am connecting with God, the oneness of the universe. When I was little, my grandmother, my grandmother Olga, used to call me a whirling dervish and this was because well, my mom when she was young she was a traveling performer dancer in uh, vaudeville and she had all this lavish extravagant costume jewelry and costume pieces from uh, her youth and when i was little she would allow me to play dress up with all those costume pieces and one of the things I loved the most was putting on her big, poofy, colorful skirts. And I remember asking my mom at some point, um, like, why, why do people wear these? Like, why, why is this, why does this exist? <laughs> Referring to, like, a skirt. And she's like, oh, well, you know, people wear these so that when they spin, uh, they will lift up and poof out and get really big and showy. Okay. She suits me up in one of these big, big flowing skirts, and I spin around, and sure enough, it lifts up into the air, and it becomes this giant circle of fabric that's swirling around me, and it has this sort of feel to it that's, I don't know, enjoyable, especially if you're a kid. Plus, if you're spinning around, you, you get dizzy, and there's the whole modified altered state component of that that is appealing to a small child. Yeah, my grandmother used to call me a whirling dervish, and I, of course, as a child, had no idea what she meant. I just assumed that that meant like a top or like a wrecking ball. All of my studies over the summer led me on this path where I, uh, I ended up reading about Rumi and Rumi's philosophy. They are a I think it's 13th century Islamic mystic, or an Iranian poet, who wrote about basically the human experience. Um, a lot of things like um, love and oneness and their definition of what constitutes as enlightenment. I, I would have had no idea to know this, but the whirling dervishes are, are disciples of the philosopher Rumi. They're called the Whirling Dervishes because they literally spin. Their meditation, uh, their um, connecting with the universe, the way that they express that is by uh, engaging in this ballet-like dance that involves twirling continuously. And there's this very lovely 
poetic explanation as to why they do that and how it relates to their life philosophy. In reading about it, as much as I have, which I'm sure I could do more research, but from what I've read, it sounds very, very similar to everything that I just described in regard to my feelings about Salmon Run and being connected to everything and having these moments of oneness, constantly trying to stay in balance, but also acknowledging that you are part of this great flux, that everything is moving always and it never stops, never goes backwards, it's just continuously going in a direction and you are part of the flow. You are the flow. You are everything because... because. <laughs> so um, again, I am going back to the library to return my super dry ancient Egyptian textbook and receive a um, intro to Rumi's body of work. And I'm very excited about this. I also get to learn about the thing that my grandmother called me as a child. Sarah, you're a whirling dervish. So until my next video, keep making awesome stuff out there, and as always, thank you for watching.